Emmy nominated, three time Grammy winner, uh, a quadruple threat from radio to recording artists to TV to big screen, and here with his sixth solo album, Theater of the Mind. Give a round of applause for Ludacris. Luda! Luda! I wanted to do an introduction, y'all. I know you already talked here. Did y'all just see that mic work? And see, what we're going to do, we're going to do a Q&A. Any questions you got for Luda, I'm just here because I enjoy good music. So, but yeah. when we start, how do you feel about that? And I know you recognize it. As no, no, an artist. No, no, I, I do. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of patient. So in time, I feel like it'll come. So it always gives me motivation if somebody isn't feeling like, you know, I'm to that point yet. That always gives me a reason to try and get to that point. So, you know, it's like a lot of MCs or a lot of rappers, they only make it to the... If people don't even get a chance to make it to their second album or third, so you know this is my sixth album. It always gives me a reason to stay hungry and just continue to grind. It's you know what I'm saying, stay on that on that hungry level like you see on that video because that undisputed video is really me just letting everybody know how hungry I am. No matter how many movies I've done or what television shows I've been on, I always used to look up to certain MCs and I see them start going and venturing over in movies and television. I'd be like, it don't seem like they're as passionate as they used to be about the music. Well, you know, that's one thing I've always kind of like been really, really passionate about myself is even though I'm doing these other things and I have the opportunity to get out there and do, like you say, triple or quadruple threat, that I continue to keep the music in my veins and know that it's number one for me. So it's okay. You know what I mean? I just feel like I got something to prove. As long as I feel like I got something to prove, I'm going to continue doing what I got to do. And that's real Just talk. because, like you said earlier, it's just because certain artists get certain spins it doesn't mean that they shouldn't get the kind of credit they deserve. So I don't attribute everything to selling a lot of records sometimes. You know what I mean? It's, it's so many different levels of the game, whether it be lyricism or, you know, selling records or how many radio spins you get or how much respect you have. You know what I mean? Not, not everybody has everything. So sometimes you just got to say what matters to you the most. And every album I do, I set out to achieve a certain goal. And honestly, when I, when I came out with, with Release Therapy, I honestly set out to win a Grammy, and when I won it, it touched my heart because I said, this is what I particularly wanted to do with this album, and I did that, and I accomplished it. So this album right here is set out to do exactly what you just said, get the credit I deserve as an MC, because I'm, I'm being financially, I'm pretty much where I need to be. So, you know, a lot of people, motivation is money, and they'll take a check to do this, check to do that. I don't necessarily need the money, so it's like, I, this goes to prove that I love what I do, and I'm living out my so dream. you and T.I., got together to do tracks. <laughs> yeah. And we all know the well-publicized friction that you guys once shared. Two-part question. I'm, I'm just curious, to what was the first conversation like when y'all decided to uh, mend your, yeah. your, your beat? I, I just wanted to always know what, no, like, no, no, who good. said what? <laughs> and did you believe them? And then how did y'all convince yourself that? The funny thing about that is we had been talking under the radar, with, which nobody would know for, for a really long time. You know, we was just trying to figure out when would be the right opportunity to just kind of surprise people. So with that being said, it's, you know, we live in Atlanta. Atlanta's small as hell. Like, compared to New York City, you know, like, there's a lot of beef in New York. Mom, like, artists don't see each other and shit. We got the same circle of friends. We go everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't go anywhere without seeing their people, our people. It was never really what you consider beef. Beef to me is when you talk about somebody's family and they want to, like, punch the shit out your ass. You know what I'm saying? Between me and him, it's like the original root of hip-hop. It was just little stuff said on records. You know what I mean? Him and my manager had an ag a disagreement, which led to some stuff, but that was between two grown men, of course. And, but you should get shocked up at the talk? No, but even, even that, you know what I'm saying? It, that shit lasted all the 30 seconds. It really, it wasn't really what people made it out to be. But when I say that, I just mean that it was real more stuff on records and stuff said, and we would see each other all the time in Atlanta, you know what I mean? So it was really, your, our lives, your entertainment, it was for everybody's entertainment. But to answer your question, we had numerous conversations and we were just trying to figure out when would be the best time to make it happen. And of course, everything that's going on in the music industry right now, we just felt like there's no better time to make it happen than now. I'm glad I, I, I like both of you two as artists. Did you make it like your priority to make sure whatever you did on tracks with um, most of the featured artists from Rick Ross, from the game, including T.I., that you, you basically lyrically smash them? <laughs> was I, feed, I feed off of them in one sense. The one thing about me is I feel like I'm extremely versatile. So, you know, even you asked me one time, and people always ask me, what do I feel like once I leave this game, what should people remember me as? 
people should remember me as one of them artists that I feel like I can do everything. If you want me to make a hit single that get a lot of radio plays, I can do that. You want me to get on a song with other rappers and, and make sure I go at them and, and make sure I'm competitive, I'm gonna do that. You want me to spit fast as hell, I can spit fast as hell. You want me to spit slow, I can spit slow. Subject matter, not talking about shit. Whatever you want me to do, I feel like I can do it. So with that being said, that's that's really what pe putting people on records where it's to feed off of their energy, learn from them, make sure we take the game to new heights. You know what I mean? I got Mount Vernon in my blood. My grandfather's from Mount Vernon, so, oh shit. Okay. No, like we got one person from my life in the house, but that just goes to show, you know what I'm saying, I, I lived a lot of my life in New York, so I got the blood, sweat, and the years to prove it, so my grandparents straight from my heart. Music is concerned, I'm really thinking about um, just anything that hasn't really been done. I really want to do, which I'm kind of working on secretly, but everybody here will know, an album with Shauna called Battle of the Sexes, because I know that Foxy Brown and Jay-Z attempted to do something. I know that there have been numerous people that try and show that female and male perspective on a whole entire album, so kind of working towards 16. that. Sixteen. What's the most amount of money you got for a sixteen bar verse? <laughs> I'm just curious how that works. How uh, that works. Look, Shaka shaking his head. No, don't do it. No. We can see value in the market. We need economical crises. You don't want to. Okay. Man, to be honest with you. <laughs> somebody in the back. I see somebody. Can you go ahead? I, I'm color. I'm blind. I'm. Oh, they asking to see your shit. There you have yeah. it. I'm about to cut mine like you did. See he got an alien up underneath this shit right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he got a science project he working on. Hey man, homie, I'm here for free, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to slow. You about to slow up on that now? <laughs> All right, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Greatest disappointment? You you can't ask me a question like that because I feel like any disappointment I've had was supposed to happen. So it just made me a stronger person, honestly speaking. I can't really think of a major disappointment because like I say, anything that happens to me that I feel like is bad, I honestly feel like it's actually good to help me out. So that's the answer to your question, to be real with you. Here's a disappointment. I know a lot of people hear that my motherfucking pool house just burned the fuck down today. <laughs> That was, that was a major disappointment, but I can, sit, <laughs> I, can, I can honestly sit back and laugh about this shit right now because it wasn't my actual house and nobody got hurt. So at the end of the day, materialistic things can always be replaced, but you can't replace people around this motherfucker. But if you would have seen the, the expensive tile that was inside that room, that, that shit upset the hell out of me. Like, for real. It's going to take a minute to rebuild that motherfucker, too. And we 